All right, Hastings, it's June, and that means June Dairy Month, and we're going on year number four with Princess Kay of the Milky Way. So welcome, Amy Kylo. Thank you for having me. We are blessed because this is the fourth summer in a row that we've had Princess Kay of the Milky Way on aprons optional. It's a little bit different. We're outside today. We're keeping things safe and six feet apart, but I think we're going to have a good time. I think so, too. <laughs> so Miss Amy Kylo, Princess Kay of the Milky Way, how did you end up getting this title of Princess Kay of the Milky Way? Well, I started out as a county princess for Olmsted County, and then last May I was selected as one of the 10 finalists for Princess Kay of the Milky Way. There was a judging process that we all went through, and I was one of the finalists. And then last August I went through another round of judging, and then I was crowned Princess Kay of the Milky Way last August. So I've been at this for about nine months, and I've been loving it. Fantastic. Well, Hastings, we are lucky because Minnesota's very own Princess Kay of the Milky Way, Amy Kylo, is here, and she actually brought a recipe to teach me. So we're gonna start with recipe number one, and I am already excited. Well, Amy, what are we making today? This looks like an exciting group of ingredients. Yes, this is called Pizza Hot Dish, super Minnesotan sounding, of course. We got the hot dish in there, and it's a family favorite for my family. We eat it probably once every two weeks at least. <laughs> oh, wow. So, uh, this is a big family favorite. It's got a lot of great dairy products in it, so I'm pretty excited to share it, and I hope you guys try it because this is really delicious and super easy as well. So if it's so super easy, what is our first step? Well, our first step is we're going to want to brown our hamburger All with right. a little bit of onion, salt, and pepper. So we're gonna start browning it and just mix it all together so that those flavors are going to melt. All right. So Amy, if we're talking dairy products, you must live on a dairy farm? That is correct. My family has a dairy farm down by Rochester, Byron's my hometown, and we milk about 95 cows. Oh, wow. That is a big farm. So how long does it take you to milk your cows every day? It probably takes about two hours and then another half an hour at the beginning and end to make sure we get our barn all cleaned up after those cows come through. And so I help my mom milk every other evening and then when I'm not milking cows, I help feed our calves. Gotcha. Do you have a lot of calves then too on your farm? Yes, right now we're calving. And so we're getting baby calves every day, not every day, but there's a chance just about every day. Uh, we calve seasonally, so we calve in the spring and the fall. So right now we'll be calving right up until about the end of June, and then we'll start up again in September. Gotcha. So we always get little breaks, and sometimes we have young calves and sometimes we don't, but it's kind of a nice thing to just kind of restart and reset a little bit in between groups of calves. So we've got our meat browned. What do we do next? All right, so we're going to take one of our crescent rolls, open it up, and then spread it in the bottom of the pan. So that's going to kind of be a, a bottom crust for our pizza hot dish. Oh, so it's like a pizza pot pie. That's right. <laughs> so with these crescent rolls, they have seams in them. Do we want to push the seams together, or does it really not matter? It doesn't really matter. Usually you just kind of want it to spread to the Bot full bottom, make sure the bottom is covered as best possible, but the seams can be there. It's kind of pretty if you gotcha. just leave it there. So normally we put this in a 9 by 13 pan, but because we're outside today, we're using disposable bakeware, and since Amy and I are both working on it, then she can take hers back to her house and I can take mine back to ours. And I don't know if we mentioned it earlier, Amy, but how much um, hamburger did we put into our pan when we started? A pound and a half. Gotcha, and one onion, and then we sprinkled in some salt and pepper, right? Correct, All yes. All right. Okay, so our next step is we're gonna put that ground browned meat that we just cooked on top of our crescent roll. Okay. Full pound and a half, gives you lots of protein on there. All right, I've got my meat in my pan. What do I need to do next? Yes, so we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of oregano on top of our meat, so that's gonna give it a little bit of seasoning. And is there a certain amount or just gently cover so it tastes good? Just gently cover, it's kind of as to taste. I guess I've always been a fly by the seat of my pants kind of cook. <laughs> so it's kind of just as to taste and give just a nice amount of flavor to it. Gotcha. So now we've got, let's see, three layers here so far. So what do we go for layer four? We go for the pizza sauce. So it sounds almost counter 
intuitive, but we're gonna go for this pizza sauce next so we can just spread it out, kind of just carefully dip and blob it across. Okay. Little blobs so that way it doesn't all end up in the same spot. And Amy had me measure this out ahead of time and we have 16 ounces of pota potato sauce, po pizza sauce. <laughs> so I'm guessing we're spreading this around and just making it look beautiful? That's right. All right, so I see a whole bunch of cheese on our tables. <laughs> That's right. So the next step you're gonna do is you're gonna shake a, a package of cheddar cheese and a package of mozzarella onto the top of your pizza sauce. It's a lot of cheese, but we love our dairy. Cheese actually contains a lot of protein and actually has been, uh, can help in weight loss because it helps fill you up oh, and wow. makes you reduce that snacky feel. So you're gonna get a lot of that great dairy nutrition that we all want to get for June Dairy Month and every month, of course, and it really makes it delicious. <laughs> it looks delicious already. <laughs> all right, and it looks like we've got two cups in each of our packages. So for those of you at home that are hoping to replicate the recipe, and then remember as well that during June on the Aprons Optional Facebook page, that's where we upload the whole year's recipes. So that will be up there for you. So you've talked a lot about different family members in your family. Is it safe to say that farming is a big deal to your family as well? Definitely. It's it's always been a togetherness project, as my dad sometimes <laughs> jokes when he needs a helper. <laughs> and it's just really, I think my first time in the barn, I was in a front pack at three weeks old. And so it's just been always together, always working together. And I really, I treasure those times. I found that for me, like, I come home from college on the weekend and I just milk cows with my mom and I tell her about my week and what I'm thinking about, what I'm worrying about. And it's been a time that we bond a lot and I, I really treasure that time. Working together on the farm really has helped foster a lot of conversations and Very I'm nice. really thankful for that. Very nice. So I see we've got one tube of crescent rolls left. I bet we're going to do something with those. <laughs> well, I'm thinking we're going to put them on the bottom. No, we're going to put it on top. <laughs> we're going to put a final roll of crescents on top. And so that'll be our second crust. All right. Oh, man. There we go. So with these crescent rolls, is this a case on the top? Do we have to vent the top at all? Or can we just plop and go? <laughs> you can plop and go. It's got all those nice little uh, divisions there if you were actually making it into a crescent roll. So those are going to work fine for ventilating. So you can just plop and go and put it in the oven. Super easy. So speaking of the oven, what temperature should we have our oven on for this one? About 350 is going to be a good, good temperature to bake it at in about for half an hour. So pop it in the oven, you know, set your table, make your other, anything else you're having for the meal and it'll be ready before you know it. Well, I think we are going to clean up our area and I've got some good ideas for a really good side dish that I'm excited to teach Amy about. And we'll put this in an oven for 30 minutes, just like she said, and let's get started on that side dish. We have our delicious pizza hot dish, thanks to Amy cooking in the oven. We actually took an intermission, drove to an oven, and got that in there. And so while that is baking, we are going to make some pasta salad that is pretty dairy heavy, so you should enjoy it. <laughs> I'm excited. It looks, it looks like there's some really great products here. So we already have eight ounces of pasta cooked in here. I put a little bit of olive oil on it so our pasta doesn't stick together. I just went with those small shells, but if you have a different shape that you prefer, you could definitely use it. <laughs> and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut up some different ingredients to mix into our pasta salad. So the first thing you're gonna want, Amy, is your broccoli. Okay. And we have about two cups of black broccoli florets, but what I wanna do is I wanna cut and I wanna make those smaller. So we wanna make these into smaller bite-sized pieces. So when you're eating your pasta salad, you're not like, oh, wow, that is giant. <laughs> Makes sense. So when we're talking about bite-sized pieces, we want something more along the lines of this because that'll be easier to pick up on your fork. So we're gonna do that to our whole bowl of broccoli. And if you run out of room on your cutting board or you wanna keep your space clean, you can toss that into the pasta set or pasta at any time. So you mentioned a lot about the farm that you live on, Amy, but if somebody wants to be a dairy princess, do they have to live on a dairy farm to make that dream come true? They do not. See, so if you were going to be a dairy princess, as long as you work with dairy cattle in some way. So there's a lot of dairy princesses that maybe uh, 
uh, show animals at the fair. We all love going to the fair and seeing those animals that are getting shown. And also some people perhaps work on a friend or a neighbor's dairy farm, and that's how they're eligible. We just really want to have everyone who's involved with working with our amazing dairy cattle get a chance to represent and talk about what they really love. Gotcha. So when did your whole reign as Princess K of the Milky Way begin? So it started last year, the night before the state fair. I was crowned at the band shell. And then right away that next morning, we were at the state fair. I was at the fair for all 12 days. It was the ride of my life and I loved it so much. Wouldn't trade it for anything. So exciting. Spent a lot of time eating some ice cream, but also from uh, the Dairy Goodness Bottle. But I also spent a lot of time just talking with fair goers and sharing and really getting to meet and connect. So you mentioned State Fair, and I know there's lots of good dairy products at the State Fair, but am I remembering correctly that Princess K is also um, the, involved in those butter sculptures or whatever that's all about at the fair? Yes, so myself and all the uh, other nine Princess K of the Milky Way finalists, were, our likenesses were sculpted in 90 pound blocks of butter. <laughs> so that was super fun. You sit in a rotating glass cooler for about six to eight hours while that process takes place. And Linda Christensen was the sculptor. She's been doing this for so many years already and it was really a pleasure to get to be part of that tradition and it was so much fun. We're still <laughs> eating the butter. Oh. <laughs> I would imagine 90 pounds takes quite quite a while to eat. That's more than just one serving of butter. <laughs> that's right, that's right. We had some, we put some on left side Christmas, uh, made some cookies and then we just love a little bit in our daily, uh, daily meal whether it's on a piece of toast or on some steamed vegetables or something. We've been working on eating all those delicious, all that delicious butter, but there's still a big chunk in our freezer, so we'll be working on it for a while. <laughs> so we have our broccoli, which is now mixed in, and we're gonna add some tomatoes. So it's just like with the broccoli, you're gonna take your knife and you're gonna decide if you wanna quarter your cherry tomatoes or if you want to have them just halved, if you wanna do slices. And so we've got about one cup of cherry tomatoes. And so I know that it seems kind of silly to have you here, Amy, when we're talking servings of dairy and we haven't put any dairy into this recipe yet, but trust me, it is coming. But when we're talking about servings of dairy, what does that really mean? How does someone know, like, what are they supposed to have for dairy in their diet? It's always recommended you get about three servings. You may, maybe said that before. And that a serving is going to look like an eight ounce glass of milk, a few ounces of cheese, a little bowl of yogurt. Uh, just really kind of, I think you can get really fussy on how many ounces something is, but really what does look like you might just sit down with a meal or a snack with is about going to be a serving. So looking for, you know, you can really go with whatever you want. I always encourage people to find something that they enjoy. I think sometimes someone says, oh, well, maybe I don't really like cheese or something and they feel like, oh, I can't get my servings of dairy. Find something you really like. If you don't like cheese, drink three glasses of milk or just really find something that works because kind of like New Year's resolutions, if you pick a New Year's resolution that you absolutely hate, it doesn't <laughs> last past February, right? Yep. So you got to find some dairy products that you really love and stick with those to get your three servings of dairy each day. And that's what's going to really make it sustainable and really explore some of the options. Everybody talks about milk, cheese, and yogurt, but if there's other things like cottage cheese, there's a million types of cheese if you really like, not quite a million, but there's a lot if you want like try some special new flavor or just really get out there, explore your dairy section and find something that looks like fun and like something you're really going to enjoy. So is it one of those things where, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of dairy options. Is it something where as long as you're having three, it's being healthy, it doesn't matter which of the three it is? That's right. I really enjoy eating all three every day, but really find something that works for you. If that means three glasses of milk, go for it and just make sure you're getting those three servings a day, no matter what they are. Very nice. So we can add our tomatoes into our pasta salad and I'm going to do a little bit of a gentle toss to start incorporating some of those ingredients. And what's really nice about this pasta salad is I kind of think about it as I want to add three things to it. So today we're doing broccoli, we're doing tomatoes and our very last thing is going to be black olives. But if you wanted to, maybe you want to do some peas, maybe you want to do some shredded carrots. If you've radishes are in your garden and you want to add those, there's lots of variety you can add. 
So we're going to, now that we have our green and our red, we're gonna throw some black in with our black olives. Same thing, I bought pitted black olives in the store. And with these, I'm going to quarter these up because that's the nice size for me. Thinking about this, you just wanna make sure that you have things that are fork friendly sizes. That sounds like a good idea. Cause I don't know about you, but the worst feeling ever is going to a restaurant <laughs> and they give you a salad and it's huge and you're trying to carefully and politely eat it. And you're like, I don't know what they expect me to get in my mouth politely, but. <laughs> well, and you're a princess, so you're supposed to be polite at all times, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. And sometimes this is a, definitely a challenge. I appreciate the ones that shred the lettuce small. <laughs> so I know you said that your job is to share pieces of information about dairy and you're doing a fantastic job of talking to the people of Hastings about that right now but you also mentioned you've gone to different school groups and you've gone to other community events and things so what kind of big messages other than just eating dairy do you talk about with people? Well I really share a lot about how much farmers love what they do and about how much they care about what they do because for me as a dairy farmer this is more than a job for me this is a way I get to bless my local community by providing them something that is nutritious and is healthy, but really we're looking to take care of our animals and our land and water, pass it on to the next generation. But really it's all about the people around us because we want to bridge those divides. Sometimes we all, this culture has become so divisive sometimes and really wanting to work to bridge the divide and talk to people about what we love and what we're doing because we really care about it and we want to be transparent and share with everyone what we're all about. So it seems like being transparent, you want to get that message out to people. Is there any kind of website or social media place where people could kind of stay current with what's going on? Absolutely. If you go to MidwestDairy.com, they have an absolutely fantastic website. They have interesting health and nutrition articles. They have articles and videos about dairy farms and dairy farmers. That is my big go-to uh, website for just knowing more about dairy farms of all kinds and that's one I'd really recommend. Also please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm gonna be, I always am sharing pictures of my farm and uh, information about dairy and what I'm up to on our dairy's farm and so really encourage people to check that out. It's something hopefully fun in your new speak. <laughs> So we are about finished with adding our black olives and we have one cup of black olives that we are doing the same gosh darn thing that we already did where we are quartering them like I mentioned and then we're going to stir them into our noodles. We now have our three that we're going to mix in and if you are thinking about this pasta salad it's going to be a side dish for us today and if you wanted to you actually could eat this as a main dish and we're going to start by adding in finally some of our dairy products amy so this is super simple because we're actually going to start with four cheese sticks and so what i have is i have two that are monterey jack and i have two that are cheddar and the reason that we're using these cheese sticks is then it'll be really easy to cut them into cubes for putting them into our salad. So I'm just gonna bring my knife along and I'm gonna make them as cubed as I can. And so I'm guessing then, based on what we talked about, a serving of dairy is probably one of these cheese sticks? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have cheese sticks at home, you can most certainly use a block of cheese. But this makes it, like I said, really easy to get that uniform shape in there. So Amy, do you have a favorite kind of cheese? That's difficult. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> Probably a cheddar is a favorite. Actually, Colby, I really like oh. Colby. That's really good on like a sandwich or mm -hmm. in soup. Our family is kind of crazy. We don't put, just put cheese on chili. We put cheese on all kinds of soup. We'll just cut oh. slices of cheese and then we will crumble it on top and like eat it with saltines. Very good. And really like getting a little bit of dairy on that. That sounds pretty delicious. Oh, it is. <laughs> We also like sometimes putting like just cheese on top of a like a uh, steamed broccoli mm -hmm. or steamed cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. Also really good with a little bit of cheese right at the very end. Sounds delicious. So once you have your cheese all cut up, you're gonna do the same thing that we've done before where you're going to slowly mix that cheese in with all of your other ingredients. And it's time to saladify this too where we need to make a dressing. 
our first ingredient that we're going to put in is actually a half a cup of sour cream. So look, more dairy, Amy. I'm loving this. <laughs> so you can be impressed and happy. So we have that half a cup of sour cream. And then to that half a cup of sour cream, we're then going to take a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise and we're gonna plop that in there as well. And then we also have a quarter of a cup of mustard and you can use just yellow mustard or if you're a fan of spicier mustards, you can do that as well. And then we're gonna start mixing this all together. So you also mentioned earlier, fuel up to play 60 in the Minnesota Vikings. What's that all about? Cause that sounds uh, more exciting than anything I'm doing in my life. <laughs> it was super fun. So fuel up to play 60 is a program that encourages kids to get 60 minutes of exercise and then refuel with healthy food like milk. So I got to go to the Minnesota Vikings game and the Minnesota Vikings partner with fuel up to play 60, the whole NFL partners. And so I got to go and meet some of the children who had done amazing at the program and who had one chance to go to oh, the football cool. game. And so I got to go and meet them. That was a lot of fun. Just get to meet all the kids and hear about their projects. And we got to go on the field, which of course was a thrill. <laughs> and so that was really just a really exciting moment. I had actually never been to a Minnesota Vikings game. Oh, so that was a that would exciting. Be a big deal, to, then. It was a big day to both get to go on the field and see a game. So really fun to partner with them and get the chance to meet some of those kids. Very nice. So when you've got all of your pieces, or all of your pieces, all of your ingredients combined, you're really close to finishing this dressing. There's only two things that we're gonna add to it. One of them is a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and then we're gonna stir to incorporate that as well. And once that is totally emulsified, remember we've talked about emulsifying your dressings before here on Aprons Optional. That means you want it totally blended in. You don't want that separation of your more solids with that liquid oil floating at the top. So you're gonna be patient with your stirring and it's also going to help loosen that dressing so that it covers your ingredients nicely. And then the last thing we're do, going to do is we're just gonna sweeten it a tiny bit with a teaspoon of sugar. Oh my gosh, Amy, you're almost a pasta salad master. We're almost done. I'm excited. <laughs> what I'm really excited about is eating it. This is the <laughs> making's fun, but the eating's the best, The right? eating is the good part. And once we have our dressing all put together and it's really nice and creamy, thanks to all that sour cream, that delicious dairy product in there, Amy approved dairy, we're just going to then dump it on top and then we're going to gently fold our dressing into those other ingredients. So when we're talking about folding, it's just scooping up underneath the bottom and then folding those ingredients on the top. That way we're not crushing any of our pasta and we're keeping everything great, grand, and wonderful. So with this being totally covered and everything is combined really nicely, we wanna put this into the refrigerator for a half an hour and the flavors will just get really nice, blended together. And then we've got our main dish, we've got our side dish, and I think we need a dessert. So I actually kicked Amy out so we could surprise her with some double chocolate muffins. And that sounds kind of silly for a dessert, but these are kind of almost cake-like, but you can get away with having them for breakfast too. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one stick of butter, I'm going to take a quarter cup of brown sugar and a half a cup of sugar. Then the last thing to that, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm just going to take, and I'm going to combine all those together and cream the butter, incorporating those sugars in the vanilla. So you know you've taken it far enough when it comes to your butter being broken into small pieces and they've got that sugar wrapped up around them. So the next thing I need to do is take two eggs and I'm gonna incorporate one at a time. So I'm gonna take my first egg, whoops, and I'm gonna pop it in and I'm going to combine it. I'm going to take my second egg and I'm gonna pop that in. And I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna mix it to combine that egg with my butter and sugar mixture. And now I'm going to take and add a half a cup of milk. 
So we've got the start of the Make Amy Happy ingredients. Actually, we already have butter in there too. She's gonna like these a lot. All right, we've got everything nice and combined. So now to this, I'm going to add one and a half cups of flour. Actually, one and a quarter, I misspoke. And I'm gonna start mixing that together. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna add my first of my double chocolates. So I have a half a cup of cocoa powder. I'm also going to mix in a half a cup of sour cream. And in order to make this rise, I have a teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of baking soda. And the last thing I'm gonna add is my half a teaspoon of salt. Now we said this was double chocolate, so we've got our cocoa in there and we're going to add five ounces of mini chocolate chips. These are semi-sweet chocolate chips if you want to. You could do dark chocolate or you could do milk chocolate, just don't do unsweetened chocolate. Ooh, that would be intense. Alrighty, so we've got our batter all mixed together. Let's get our mixer out of the way. And this actually makes 12 muffins. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my muffin pan and I'm going to use muffin papers to line my muffin tin. And I'm gonna take an ice cream scoop and I'm going to scoop these into my muffin tins. So this one actually had three dairy ingredients. We had our sour cream, we had our butter, and we had our milk. What's really nice about these muffins is they do raise up a little bit, but not a ton. So you can be pretty generous when it comes to filling your muffin papers. Once I've got all my muffin papers filled, I'm gonna put this into... Well, if you saw that, they just blew away. So um, I've got clean muffin papers. I haven't blown onto the ground. And I'm going to put one muffin paper in at a time. Ah, there goes another one. <laughs> Ooh, we're doing real well, Hastings. So <laughs> we're just gonna slowly fill these in. We are gonna put this into a 375 degree oven. And these are gonna take 20 to 25 minutes to bake in the oven, depending upon your oven. You can check them to see if they're done by putting a toothpick in. If you put the toothpick in and it comes out clean, then you note that your muffin slash cupcake slash deliciousness is fully cooked. So I'm just gonna top off some of these muffin papers with the last little bit of batter that I have left, pop these in the oven, and then let's bring back Amy to see if what we've made is Amy approved. Well, Amy, while you got a little vacation from cooking, I surprised you with some double chocolate muffins. So hopefully they are Amy approved because they have milk, butter, and sour cream in them. I, that sounds Amy approved, <laughs> plus the double chocolate. I gotta say, I love that personally. <laughs> so how much longer are you Princess K of the Milky Way? I am Princess K until the end of August, with those actually been 10 finalists named. If you wanna check out my social media, you can find out who they are. And so amazing group of young women. And the next Princess K will be found out at the end of August. So I'm treasuring these moments, but it's definitely a great opportunity. I've been loving every moment. So thanks to Amy, we have a delicious pizza hot dish. We have my deliciously wonderful pasta salad and our Amy approved double chocolate chip muffins. So remember Hastings, the apron's optional, but the flavor isn't. And I'm going to put one muffin paper in at a time. Ah, there goes another one. <laughs> Ooh, we're doing real well, Hastings.